Hello and welcome to the Arcades video series on economics. My name is Markus Alborn and today we will talk about the market mechanism, an incredibly useful tool which we are going to use in all of our economics courses and in most of our lectures. Markets are indeed everywhere you look. Of course, you know, supermarkets, farmers markets, even stock and labor markets. But ultimately, the market forces of supply and demand, which we will introduce here, are behind all monetary transactions that you make. So let's go and let's take a closer look at this market mechanism. So today we will examine demand and supply of a market in more detail. We'll find out how we can model these two sides of the market within the price quantity diagram and we will understand why and when demand and supply change. And then we will apply this model to all sorts of economic questions, for example to monopolies and market power, so what will happen if there's only one supplier on our market or to government intervention when we ask ourselves what will happen if the state intervenes into the market, for example, with taxes or price controls. But first we take a closer look at regular markets and look at what is defined as our market outcome. So we ask ourselves what's the quantity, so how much will be bought and sold on our market, and what is the price, how much do we have to pay for our good. We can and will apply this model of the market mechanism to all kinds of goods and services, but we will start with a quite simple example of a good we are all familiar with. We will take a look at the market for apples. So we represent markets in this price quantity diagram and want to find out which combinations of price and quantity are supplied and demanded. So let's start with the demand side of our apple market. One can reasonably assume that Apple demand will be high at low prices and, on the other hand, it will be lower at a higher price. This is caused by differences in the willingness to pay for apples. Some people love to eat an apple each day and are accordingly willing to pay a lot for one. Others, however, much rather eat ice cream, bananas or candy bars and are only buying an apple if the price is low. We represent these differences in the willingness to pay with the demand curve. For normal goods, such as apples, it has a negative slope. The lower the price, the higher the demanded quantity. This represents all combinations of price and quantity for which market participants demand apples. So on the one hand, the price is high, for example 50 cents per apple, there will only be a few people willing to pay that price. Hence. For example, only 100 apples will be sold on our market. On the other hand, more people will be willing to pay for an apple if the price is lower, for example 10 cents. Also, those who usually prefer ice cream or candy bars will now buy apples and hence a higher quantity will be traded on our market, for example 400. What the exact shape of this curve will be will always depend on the assumptions that we make about our good. For example, the so-called elasticity, so how strong will demand react to price changes, plays a large role here. Let's now turn to supply, the second side of our market. We now want to model how much of our good will be supplied at differing prices. Here again it should be clear intuitively what the relation between price and quantity is. If suppliers can charge a high price, they will supply a large quantity and, on the other hand, if that price is low, they will supply a lower quantity. Why is this the case? We can again analyze what ultimately determines the supplied quantity. Here this will be profit, so the relation between revenue and costs for our suppliers. So let us take a look at our Apple market. There are definitely different Apple farmers with different productivities. Some are farming on good soil with a good climate and possess equipment maybe and know-how which will give them an advantage over other farmers that are working in less optimal circumstances. And ultimately all farmers face increasing marginal costs. Apple production cannot be increased that easily. New trees have to be planted, new workers have to be hired and new land has to be bought. So per unit production costs consequently rise with the produced quantity. So if our apple farmers want to keep making profits, they have to raise their revenue per unit if costs per unit are rising. So the price, which is nothing but the revenue per unit, of apples must increase to keep our farmers making profits. 
So a higher quantity of apples must be accompanied by a higher price to maintain our supplier's profits and the supply curve has its positive slope. So if the price is low, for example 10 cents, only the most efficient apple farmers can keep producing at a profit and hence apple supply will be low, for example 150. And should the apple price rise, for example up to 50 cents, suppliers can produce higher quantities with higher costs per unit and keep making a profit. So the supply quantity might be higher, for example 400. The exact shape of this curve again depends on our assumptions here too. Elasticities will be important and will be discussed later. So let's now see what happens to our market when external influences change demand or supply. So let's start with demand. Consider a change in the willingness to pay, for example due to a higher income. You will see that an increase in income will usually increase the willingness to pay for our consumers. So the demand curve will shift up and to the right. For any price, consumers are now willing to buy a higher quantity or, put differently, for any quantity, they are willing to pay a higher price. The opposite will happen if income decreases. Now people are no longer willing to pay as much for the given quantities, so the demand curve shifts down and to the left. There are multiple reasons why the demand curve may shift up or down, such as changes in the prices of substitutes, complements or changes in income. Ultimately, anything that influences the willingness to pay of our consumers will shift the demand curve. On our market for apples, such a shift might come from maybe a trend towards a healthier lifestyle or a new study showing that an apple a day really does improve your health, which will make people demand more apples instead of ice cream or candy bars by increasing their willingness to pay. Shifts in supply are possible as well, of course. Remember that the supply curve is showing all price and quantity combinations where firms are making a profit. So hence anything that might change the relation between revenue and especially costs will change the supply curve. Take an increase in productivity, for example. Let's say for some reason our firms are able to get more output out of the same input. This will mean that costs per unit are decreasing. On our market for apples, such a productivity shock might be caused by a good climate which will directly influence our apple harvest. A good climate will mean that we can grow more apples on our farm and hence supply a higher quantity at relatively low prices. So such an increase in productivity will shift our supply curve down and to the right. Firms will start making profits at lower revenue per unit, so lower prices, because they now have lower costs per unit. So they can supply higher quantities at any given price. Conversely, a decrease in productivity, for example due to a bad harvest, will shift our supply curve up and to the left, as now higher costs are being incurred, making higher prices necessary. So a negative productivity shock will lead to the opposite, lower quantity and or a higher price. So today we have modeled both sides of our market, the demand side being determined by willingness to pay of our consumers and shifting due to, well, changes in this willingness to pay. And we have modeled the supply side of our market being determined by the relation between revenue and costs for our firms and shifting when this relation is changing. In upcoming videos and in our lectures, we will bring these two sides of the market together and analyze the market equilibrium and, most importantly, we'll see how this equilibrium changes if external circumstances are changing. So this was our video on supply and demand. I will see you in the next videos or in class. So until then, goodbye.